The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. At present, the social networks which have been used, like the Facebook, many people form themselves as groups, Christianity groups. And the way the people, they could show forth their knowledge or their capacity of thinking to be clearly termed out shows to us as pastor teachers what is the need and how much emergency it is for us to once again restart isagogical, categorical and exegetical information in the pulpits through the one and the only dispensing technique known as dispensations. Church is the university. Pastor teacher is the dean of that university. Every believer being termed out as saint is a professor. Not only to teach to those angels, but rather even manifest even to the life of the training in their lives whom they come along in this journey of pilgrimage to. This great work this great responsibility which a pastor teacher has to realize by looking upon their posts in the Facebook clearly shows us the sign of apostasy that is existing today. Clearly shows us the way that people, how much eagerly they are waiting for the miracles or healings to be done into their life rather than to take some valuable doctrine into their souls. This temporary miracles or healings is just perishable. If you're suffering with ill health, and if you go to that minister and he prays for you with his anointing oil business, and you are being healed, then what? Is that inevitable for you? Dear brethren, you cannot continue that same defunct spiritual gifts into this realm of the completed canon of scripture. Today, if there is any healing, it has to be spiritual healing, a healing for your soul and spirit. That healing can never come to you until and unless you put the I salve of Bible doctrine. Then your priorities will change, then your thinking will change, then your meaning and definition for your life will change. Then the comments, what you put, or the posts, what you share in the Facebook or any other social network or in any other treating manner of your life under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will start to think divine viewpoint and not a never human viewpoint. In fact, even it will change the course of direction for a pastor teacher not to be an advocate of human viewpoint, but rather to be the communicators of this uniquely communication leadership gift of absolute truth. A pastor teacher will not become an instrument of deception, but rather he will become an instrument of truth. No matter what may come, he sticks on not to be worrying about the softies of this earth. The softies of this earth which have been following very much in today's Christendom. When we could look upon those posts, when we could look upon their comments, what they are going to paste there. The softies which include for them, number one, worrying about the fellow believers' ostracism. This ostracism which really lessens to think that they are very much less. In fact, when we could find that Thing happening among pastors only, far less it could happen among the believers. Number two, the pastors are so much worried about the softies of ecclesiastical 
displeasure of their superiority because the way you preach to them telling them there are no miracles no healings or tongues telling to them this is false doctrine what you're teaching in the pulpits but rather we need to not entertain pikes or penance it is by grace ministry through rebound it is by grace ministry of not pikes has been required but the way how lot prospers in your heart that is what you're going to give it is not to tell to them that see you have given to the lord lord is going to bless you again further because it is a grace pipeline of lord's working upon you because of that divine imputed righteousness to your soul lord will respect and pay it back all these things when you start to tell your ecclesiastical superiority may be displeasureized that softy you should not fear but rather you should fear to the lord and tell what is the truth what are these men what they are accountable for they are only breath in their nostrils you have been given equal privilege and equal opportunity you have been given the privacy of your priesthood you have been given the privacy of your ambassadorship you have been given the greatest work upon your shoulders to witness unto the lord you have been given that equal privilege and common register into the entrance into the registry book but after entering into there you will have classifications depending upon the time that you have invested for escrow blessings into the bible doctrine through learning in time or to the escrow blessings of eternity by executing that bible doctrine which you have learned in time your classification comes there into play but now you are having equal thing equal opportunity equal privilege you need not worry about others you need not worry what they criticize you and in fact even you need not worry whether they listen to your doctrine or not do you know why you are not here to please men but rather you are here to please lord god almighty and lord knows very well who are those people who are going to hear your doctrine so that they can in return become a witness for the truth our lord knows very well in eternity past that today i'm going to speak this words who are ready to go against the plan of lord god almighty accept our evolution we can take it positively to walk in the paths which our lord shows those ancient paths which are always right those ancient paths right from the dispensation of the israel even into the dispensation of the millennium the eschatological real we know our lord alone shall reign forever and forever no matter what it comes the dispensation of the israel being ensampled for us the way the people murmured against the lord and thought to think human viewpoint were utterly consumed and destroyed the way this human advocates they have become using the words of the lord not to be worth but rather using it in vain has caused them what costed them the babylonian captivity in that dying dirge of them in psalms 119 they declare and they want to tell now lord your mandates are our heritage i have kept your commandments in my soul so that i should not sin against thee if they would have rather kept or they would have rather guarded it with true integrity towards my lord that dirge wouldn't have been recorded in psalm 119 we have just written and we have been looking and reading that dirge but if we could look back into the isagogical background of the subject of the history you will better realize very soon it would be safe for us to look upon lord's word very clearly rather than to deceive my lord and there to deceive his congregation with such kind of a false miracles false healings and false tongues you would really change for the shock the way when jeremiah determines and tells to them you will really find out they were not even having proper food to survive the drought which hit them with pestilence and famine it costed their own children to be burned and to be eaten so bad was the fact josephus records and tells that the woman without the food 
whom she gave birth. She tells anyhow this guy is going to die. Better I will fry him or roast him. And she took literally, chopped him and just cooked for the food so that she can eat his own, her own son flesh. And the people on the streets when they could hear to the smell, they rushed in and threatened that woman to kill her if she wouldn't have told where is the remaining food that you have stored and kept. And then she tells, I've kept it there, you can go and take it. Then they leave them, her, and they go and get that food and they eat. Do you want to look what is the wrath of the Lord? Do you want to stay in such kind of a circumstances? They could even eat the sandal of leather and survive. They ate snakes, they ate frogs. You may think eventually the people they are eating. But for a Jew, eating snake or frog was an unclean animal. It was against the commandments of Lord God Almighty. I'm telling to you all during the period of dispensation of Israel, the way they disobeyed the Lord's word, what it costed them. That should not be the fate of today's Christian believers. The fifth cycle of discipline. That's why we need to understand and gain back and put number one priority for Bible doctrine, no matter what it comes. No matter whether the people listen or not, you stick to the truth. You abide on the truth. You are here not to please men, but you are here to please Lord God Almighty. And that's the toughest work you have upon your shoulders. Why do you want to waste around your time in those useless and worthless things which are going to easily perish off? Today they are happy with you. Tomorrow they are angry with you. And why do you worry about this man who have only breath in their nostrils? Who are more weak than this wind which tosses away to and fro? Who are not having integrity in their heart, mind and soul to stick to the truth? Today the word they speak, tomorrow they don't stick to that word. Why do you worry about this man? You need to give them the truth. They need to change to the integrity of the Lord. For that you need to worry. If they are not interested to take the truth, Lord help them. Lord knows how to provide the truth. But what you are doing while you are being kept alive, that is what you need to count. You need to count every day worth. You need to count your libation poured out to the Lord valuable. You need to take that today you have paid back to the Lord two hours, forty minutes or not. That is what you need to count, dear brethren. And if you're not able to look back, if you're not able to give back to those things to the Lord, then what is the point of you thinking, surviving in this great, unique dispensation of the church age with great, unique privileges of all time, with equal opportunity to execute this protocol plan of God? Why we need to worry about men? If at all we need to worry as pastor teachers, we need to worry. The responsibility laid down upon my shoulders, have I done it correctly or not? Have I taught you all exact word of the Lord or not? Have I made you all to understand this inculcation or not? That's what I need to worry, not my fellow men. Not the fear of ecclesiastical displeasure of our superiority laid down upon our shoulders. Not to worry about that soft peace. We cannot go against the word of the Lord. We cannot fight against the Bible doctrine. Ultima is biblical truth. Though the heaven and earth will perish, his words are eternally recorded and kept. They will never perish. We need to worry whether we are being worried about reaching and inculcating isagogical, categorical and exegetical biblical truth and other dispensations or not, rather than worrying about our softies. That softies that you will worry, the income will be cut for you if you could tell the truth for them. It is better, brethren, to stay alone with the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, 
and to walk in his path with integrity rather than staying in royal mansions and to walk without the integrity and without my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our heart, mind, soul and spirit. That's why we have to come to the point of realization once again being as pastor teachers, where are we failures? Are we really prepared to preach the word of the Lord or not? Are we rightly dividing Bible doctrine or not? Never we will realize the truth that we have been delivered so much from the bondage of this sin market that by your deeds you can never attain to that. Then to what are we doing? We are becoming thieves and traitors in the sight of Lord. That's why this man will never realize what is the truth. But you as a pastor teacher need to be a voice. Need to be for the inculcation of biblical truth as a voice. Your theological seminaries could teach them the importance of the original languages of the scriptures and start exegesis in my country like India. Because we know already the client nation USA might be teaching them exegesis and the people may not be interested to inculcate them back to those hearers. Even though if they are doing the right thing and coming out and following wrong thing, ultimately that is wrong. But we need to start up fresh theological seminary colleges with isagogical, categorical and exegetical exposition of biblical truth. That's it. They should be inculcated one of the major doctrines of dispensations to them. That's it. Doctrine of angelic conflict to them. We need to tell. We need to understand. We need to make them to realize why they are in this world. What is the purpose in this angelic conflict? They have been still kept alive. And above all, we need to tell to them the spiritual gifts as well, which are into force. Apostle Paul, if he would have had little more time, rather than decapitated, or he could tell to us, he knows very well the primary hearing is gone, the secondary one will come and he will be decapitated. He uses that pagan Greek word to tell to us, I have been poured down my life as a libation unto Christ. And he really regrets to the point where I should have poured more, the valuable thing, there I poured very less of my life as libation. That meant to say, he was realizing to the fact and telling to us that mystery doctrine of the church age, the church age corpuscles, the church age corpus which included Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians, was not been much more explained. He didn't have so much of time to reveal us but rather, Lord God, the Holy Spirit could explain and give it to them. But today, if you could find in the pulpits, what is the church age? What is the mystery doctrine? What is the unique spiritual life? You will get 100% out of 100% result, 0.00 people who doesn't even know what is this unique spiritual life. Only point infinity one. People may know what is this church age, what are the importance of this mystery doctrine, what are the importance of this unique spiritual life to be communicated to the pulpits. Only very few people can know them. Major of the people, majority of Christians today, when we could look their posts in the Facebook, it tells to us they are interested to count for the temporary sufferings to be elevated. They are interested to work upon prophetical nuts. They are interested to look upon the miracles in their life by getting a good job, by getting a good wife, by getting a good X, Y, Z activities in their life, whatever it could be the best. They are happy to be healed. What for? Once again to sin and fall sick. 90% of the people are interested in such kind of a useless and worthless dogmas. They want instant, as it is today, very much instant age. Within a flick, you will get everything could be done through your smartphones as well, what you have in your hands. They want instant, even Bible doctrine could be edified. As it is a truth for you to realize, 
when a newborn baby till to the point of maturity he takes time to communicate until he develops the vocabulary to learn and then he could become wise enough to the age of maturity to take the responsibility for his own decisions from the things where he has learned the source being taught from his mother so as such we need to come though we are into this reality of the age of an instant things happening around with scientific evidences so is the bible doctrine need to be inculcated and it's a training process it takes time speaking in tongues is like as simple you tell to the point that I have been edified by what it's as simple as telling that in a smartphone I have paid an electricity bill in the smartphone I have recharged in the smartphone I have done this and that no need to go and stand in the queue not to take money from the bank and draw it and put it in the account where I need to put all could be done in the phone in the in the magic of a phone that's what they can tell that's as simple as they tell exactly is the tongues for them to be edified which is no process at all which is no reality at all your edification of the soul demands the growth of a, as if of a newborn baby has been born irrespective of the trends of the people eating is common drinking is common everyone can enjoy it our moral moral people believers unbelievers everyone can enjoy it even in the same manner everyone who have been designed by lord can have their children their exact replica when the child is born do you think he has been born maturely do you not know he has been born as a very small baby and then he needs to grow up you give him sincere milk and then you feed him some food and then you give him some strong meat is it not the process same for each and every denominational cults even if you could call pentecostal crowd if she can have a baby even this is the procedure even if it's the baptist one if he can have a baby the same procedure he needs to grow up exactly lord doesn't recognize our denominations the Lord recognizes our disciplined growth in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You as a believer who has been born are not of this world. As Lord is not of this world, even we are not of this world. We need to be sanctified, we need to be grown, we need to be growth up. In what? Our growth up should be in Bible doctrine. Our results should be experience of knowledge in Bible doctrine not that instantaneous it doesn't mean to say that this crowd pentecostal one she had a baby and she speaks in tongues and her daughter is absolutely becoming mature by the birth and she has been become a mature woman can you tell that even the baptist can you tell that her baby has been grown up instantaneously the moment he was born though she speaks in tongues and he doesn't believe in tongues the both babies follow the same procedure the procedure being the same they need to grow up they need to train up they need to be edified but how do you think foolishly when you speak in tongues you are edified in bible doctrine our lord hasn't he told grow in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine our lord hasn't he told we need to desire the sincere milk of bible doctrine our lord hasn't he told man does not live by bread alone but by every word which comes from the mouth of lord god almighty our lord hasn't he told strong meat belongs to those who have discerned who have learned to discern what is right and what is wrong through the thorough practice through the process of training through the process of training through the process of training not once again being laid the fundamentals of elementary principles but rather training up moving up on to maturity to eat strong meat and it belongs to a mature man the one who is grown up and that is what dear brethren you and i need to understand when you consider you speak in tongues you have been grown up that is not the ultima that is not the criteria the only thing which we can take is a training process for your baby 
she takes time to grow up. Exactly into the realm of Bible doctrine, it takes time, inculcation. When they can grow up, then they can discern what is right and what is wrong. How can they grow up until unless they have time to learn this truth? They have most value to be given for them to understand this truth. They have to give number one priority and make up their time. They may tell we have 24 hours. We are doing this, we are doing that. I am the busiest person in this world. Lord is not a man to be partiality to show for one person without work and to be in full ministry and to the other person to be involved in full business and not to have time for him. You can really make up your time for the things which you really needed to make up. And the only one primary thing which every believer should make up time is to learn Bible doctrine out of the 24 hours best hour for him. Ample it is three times greater than the works the world can ever realize. From morning 6 to evening 6, it is the daytime that they count. In this morning 6 to evening 6, you do your works. You do everything. Your 12 hours have been gone. Remaining 8 hours, you go for sleep. And furthermore, still you are left out with 4 hours more. You cannot plead ignorance stilling to the point. Lord, I couldn't have sufficient time. If he, there is a faithful pastor, teacher, he alone can claim to the point, Lord, your 24 hours is not enough to me because I need more time to study and to learn and to develop in thy word and preach thy word accurately. That alone he can tell. Only who is a faithful pastor, teacher, he can tell that. Not every cluck, not every idiot, not every moron, because they do not value the value of 24 hours given in their life. He tells, this 24 hours are not sufficient for me, in that I can't give one hour to come and study for the word of the Lord. In fact, even Lord has graciously given to you two hours, 40 minutes to give to him as tithe, not your money. He requires your time. But until and unless you give up time to grow in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, you cannot comment on those posts. You cannot realize to discern whether it is right or wrong. You cannot come to know whether the defunct use of the false spiritual gifts are still into force or not. And you will never know the pain of Apostle Paul when he gave in the dying declaration in 2 Timothy 4, 6-8. It is a tough time to live the field when there are no enough men who can carry forward the battle. But Apostle Paul trusted it towards Timothy. And then he told him, you carry on. Now the time for me for departure is at hand. That command inadvisably applies to each and every pastor teacher for all generations who could be till to the rapture of church. Our leader has left to look and to stay with our great high priest, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our leader who has told not even to diminish a word, not even who has told for them, I am clear from your responsibility because I have not shunned to declare to you the entire counsel of the Lord, but I have gave to you everything. You cannot plead ignorance. Sometimes if you could ask me, the way this world runs politics in their five years term of ruling that nation, when they could end up in those five years term for which they are obligated to go and tell to do good things for that nation providing those needful things which that nation requires by the end of five years once again if they could be faithful to the Lord if they could be faithful to their profession people will elect them to be the next five years ruler to over them if he is not faithful he is a fraud what do they do? They don't elect him again. At least this work is much more feasible to become a ruler of a nation and try to think this part and that part. Oh, this part of the demography is not working properly, so I need to concentrate on this people. What is going wrong? Why there is no income? That is what a nation leader can sit and think. But when you come to the work of a pastor teacher, dear brethren, 
each and every believer who are under your care has to be much constantly worried. Where is their growth? What is hindering their growth? Why aren't they positive towards Bible doctrine? Why are they indifferent towards doctrine? Because they are being under your care. And if they really doesn't want to listen to your doctrine and they think you are an abusive person, you are cleared out of your responsibility upon your shoulders to train them up, to make them perfection and completion into the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's as simple as that. You are cleared out of your responsibility. That is as simple as that. And that could be a great relief for a pastor teacher because he can be pure from their blood upon his hands. It is better for us not to become a pastor teacher. Do you know why? If you are not able to perform our work properly, to thoroughly train them up, to make them perfect and complete in the grace which has been bestowed upon us, much has been required from us because much has been given unto us. And we need to be answering at the judgment seat of Christ for the gift that has been bestowed upon you. What have you done and how much have you done and why have you neglected the remaining part? If at all you have neglected what the Lord who has done, who has begun a good work in us, is He who is going to complete that good work in us. How provided we are positive. How can we train you until unless you are positive? That's why remember those things when you're posting into the social networks. The things what you post should be of eternal value. And one moron who calls himself as prophet. He claims that divorce between a wife and husband could be stopped by concentrating on the words of 2 Timothy 4, 6. See how Apostle Paul fought a good fight. So even you need to fight a good fight with your wife, with your husband. Now are able to realize that the marriage foundation is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and those both family building walls should be constructed by Bible doctrine and this both should reach to the status of spiritual maturity number one. The one who is getting married and number two, the woman she is getting married. If husband knows Old Testament, the wife should know the New Testament. If in return the wife knows Old Testament, the husband should know the New Testament. Why? They both are corporate witness unto the Lord. As Adam and few, you failed, these are the men they are not going to fail for Christ in the survey. They are going to reign their children in Bible doctrine. They are going to leave behind a corporate witness. And do you believe it or not, from generations, the people, the angelic host are waiting to salute you if you could be a corporate witness in this generation. They don't want you to be a failure. Individual witness, you can grow up. But corporate witness demands that both husband and wife grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine as more than ever after they could get married, till deeper into the grace. A marriage sustains upon Bible doctrine, not upon anything else. Your marriage has been designed to work upon Bible doctrine, not upon anything else. Not upon your wealth, not upon your job, not upon your prosperity, not upon her beauty, not upon your handsomeness. Marriage sustains upon Bible doctrine. Marriage tells to us what are we as a corporate witness unto our Lord. And wrongly interpreting, giving the cheapest form of output, considering Second Timothy 4, 6 through 8, really hurts me a lot when people claim foolishly that they are prophets and are preaching that as truth. What and how will they ever realize when Apostle Paul was telling that I have fought the good fight? That great verse in verse 6 it starts. From verses 1 through 5 Paul is urging Timothy to take the initiative because he himself is being called from the field of action and Timothy must carry on. He says I am now ready to be offered. The I is emphatic in the Greek text. It is as for myself in contradiction to Timothy and others. And to translate literally as for myself I am already being poured. What is now suffering is the beginning of the end. The process has already begun which shall shed his blood. 
The word offered is from a Greek word spandomai, used in pagan worship to refer to the libation or drink offering poured down to a god, where Paul uses the same word in Philippians 2.17, where he looks upon himself as the libation poured upon the sacrifice, namely the Philippian service to the Lord Jesus, the lesser part of a sacrifice poured out upon the more important part. Only one who considered himself less than the least of all the saints could write in such deep humility. And furthermore, Paul had his preliminary hearing before Nero and was expecting the final one and death. He knew it would be not be crucifixion because of his Roman citizenship. If death was demanded by the state, it would be decapitation, the figurative speech of representation for libation. He writes, the time of my departure is at hand. The servant of the Lord is immortal until his work is done. And that is what the duty of a pastor teacher should be brought to their mind. That his duty is immortal, and he is immortal until his duty has been done. And the word departure translated means analio is interesting. It meant to say to unloose. Not only to unloose, it has further meanings as well. It meant to say to undo again, to break up. And here the context of the subject explains to us to depart. It was a common expression for death. It was used in military circles of the taking down of a tent and departure of an army, and in nautical language of the hoisting of an anchor and the sailing of a ship. Paul uses the same word in Philippians 1.23. During his first imprisonment, he was kept a prisoner at the Praetorium, the military camp of the emperor's body ground. But now in his second, it is thought that he writes from a cold, damp Roman dungeon. In his first use of the word, it would seem that he used the figure of striking one's tent. He was in a military camp. He was a tent maker by trade, and he spoke of the human body as a tent. If so, it is probable that he had the same figure of speech in mind here. The words is at hand are from a Greek word, episteme, which means to stand by, to be on hand. It was as if death already stood there. Peter also had the same premonition of approaching death in Second Peter 1.14. So the translation is, for my life's blood is already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure is already present. And the seventh verse is very great information. I will continue that in the next step, but rather I will give you the translation. The desperate, straining, agonizing contest marked by its beauty of technique. I, like a wrestler, have fought to the finish, and at present I am resting in the victory. My race, I, like a runner, have finished, and at present I am resting at the goal. The faith, the doctrine committed to my care, I, like a soldier, have kept safely through everlasting care, that is vigilance, and have delivered it again to the captain of my soul. The cheap substitutions applying it to the marriage for your business and telling Second Timothy 4, 7 by the post which they have been put by the one who calls himself as a prophet anointed one is not only devouring the flock but instead is really killing the true meaning of the interpretation of the verse. And these men who are following such kind of a groups will never realize what is the truth. And when this is the case in today's Christendom, why not Zakir Nayak, Sheikh Ahmad Didad, Wali Farad, or anyone who name it, they can come and have authority over you and try to devour you from the doctrine which has been resident in your soul. Why? Definitely they will make it. And that is what, dear brethren, you and I have been cautioned again and again to recollect the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders. That great responsibility, if we ignore to rightly divide the word of truth, will cause a great shame, great contempt to be appeared at the judgment seat of Christ. Today, if you hear this doctrine, turn to the original order of the pulpit, which is isagogical, categorical, and exegetical exposition of biblical truth, under the only one dispensing technique, which is known as dispensations so that you can know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So that you can pull down those false imaginations which reign against the word of the Lord. Though they try to reign, they are never reigning. But rather it is costing our Christian believers that spiritual growth, that spiritual value, that spiritual significance in their use of ayah of their life. Wherewith by living that spiritual life they can be 200% superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. That's why Satan never wants them to know the truth. Experientially, it wants to devour them. It wants to kill them off. 
and gives those secondary things as primary with its fraudulent dimensions and pretensions. But we need to be very wise enough to know the truth. Though the discernment of the spirits, the temporal spiritual gifts is not into force, we have been given the great wealth of all time, the indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit in us, the great wealth Lord God had indwelling in us with the Shekinah glory. When we die, we could see our Lord in us. We are the much more profitable one. We are been living by the Father in us for only one simple reason, to execute this protocol plan of God, to ask for blessings for time as well as for eternity. That ask for blessings for time, which include desire for truth, love for God. And not only that, it gives for you your strength of character, incredible stability, your perseverance, your motivation, your momentum. And it also gives above all to share the happiness of Christ. So that why we can execute this protocol plan of God, followed by the three adult stages of this unique spiritual life, followed by spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy, and then by spiritual maturity, so that when you are passing down through the doctrinal status quo of our languages, we can get along to the truth. Going on from this elementary principles and looking upon the major doctrines of our Lord. Going on upon perfection, moving upon this unique spiritual life. Your first stage, spiritual self-esteem, followed by cognitive self-confidence, your doctrinal status quo, followed by problem-solving device number seven and eight, personal love towards God and new personal love towards all mankind, and followed by your evidence for your testing that is most essential, which is providential preventive suffering. You will be tested. Why? If you think you are a doctor, you need to pass the exams, and the one authority board should give you that you are a doctor. Likewise, doctrine should be tested in your soul, whether you are eligible to pass down this first stage or not. So you will be given this providential preventive suffering. When you pass that test, you are entering into the second stage, which is spiritual autonomy, followed by cognitive independence, because doctrine is number one priority in your life. First problem solving device number nine, which is sharing the happiness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, plus the momentum testing under four categories. This momentum testing is very great. People testing, thought testing, system testing, and your modus operandi and modus vivendi, wherewith whatsoever comes in you, you give number one priority for biblical truth and not for anything else. And when you pass down this test, you enter the third and final stage, which is spiritual maturity, and Apostle Paul tells in Philippians 3 that I have not yet attained to that state of spiritual resurrection over spiritual maturity. I need to grow up by living back those things and looking forward and reaching to that goal. That spiritual maturity is what you and I, dear brethren, we need to concentrate. That spiritual maturity, dear brethren, we need to look upon because we need to attain to the spiritual resurrection in our soul, spirit and body. While we are having these souls in nature in this earth, this is a great privilege for a believer to reign spiritual resurrection. So that we are not even giving an inch or an mm of a length for all sin nature to control us, but rather being under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we are giving number one priority for Bible doctrine. That should be our source. So when you reach the third stage, the ultima of your unique spiritual life, followed by your cognitive invincibility doctrinal status quo, plus your problem solving device number 10, which is occupation with Christ, plus your evidence testing are two categories, either towards life or towards the plan of God. Towards life like Job, towards plan of God like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being tempted after 40 days. Man does not live by bread alone, dividing the word rightly from the word which has been quoted by Satan. Even Satan uses that word to quote. Even the false ministers use the word and tell today still there are miracles or healings or tongues. But Lord said, no, first comes the suffering, then the crown in the second test. And in the third test, he tells to us, we should not tempt our Lord, Lord God Almighty. What he has told, that will come to pass. And when he has told, those temporary things have been seized, that will come to pass. When he has told no woman preacher to have authority over the man, that will come to pass. We are not the one to become a hindrance. We are not the one to become a mental blocks or stumbling blocks. But rather, we are here to tell them the truth. Why do you want to avoid the truth, allure the believer from the word, and make you to follow your lips rather than reality in the truth? That's where you will be easily filtered. The word alone will divide you from the word. And if number one priority not learned from Bible doctrine of original exegesis of the scriptures, you can never stand in this angelic conflict. You can never win over this battle that is going around constantly in your soul. That battle only when you are ruled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and learning the word of the Lord, you can be stabilized and you can be winning and you can be reigned with Christ forever, like a triumphant which has already reigned. 
So which way you want to go, you decide. Because after you pass down this either of the one test which you get to your life, you'll be reaching to the maximum glorification of Christ, invisible hero, the winner believer of all time, the history pages record, recorded forever. Only few can reach that because though ample has been given to every believer, every believer doesn't value the word of the Lord. And thus, then they're not valuing the word of the Lord, the comments or the posts in those Facebook social networks will cause them not to realize the truth and the truth is not been thought for them clearly. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements be dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order of telling to God the Father that they believe upon Christ, that is the moment to serve the shall have this eternal life. For an unbeliever, the point is very simple. Believe in the Lord and save Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. For the believer, it is very simple. Growing grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the command is very simple. Preach the word. Kerosothon Lagan. Be prepared in season and out of season. That's as simple as that. The diameter of my witness is bestowed upon you. You need to look upon that. So, Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with us with thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and all these things, for we ask in Christ's name, Father. Amen. <laughs>